In today's video, I'll be turning this bench black with a combination of vinegar and steel wool. I found this bench in a park in between a fire hydrant and a water fountain. No, actually I found it in a thrift store, as usual. This bench is solid oak and it's red oak, which I like sometimes, but in this case, the color and the grain pattern reminded me a little too much of 1980s kitchen cabinets or a church pew. So I decided to refinish it and turn it black. First thing I did was to strip off the original finish or what was left of it. To do that, I used a chemical stripper. This is QCS by Stripwell. And I just sprayed it on and waited until the finish was starting to lift and then scraped it off. And this is a clear stripper removing a clear finish. So there's not much to see, but trust me, the finish was coming off. And then I went over it with some steel wool and some more stripper to remove any spots of finish that were left. And I also used some lacquer thinner on any spots that were particularly, that were particularly, that were particularly, that were extra hard to get off. I left the bench to dry for a few days. And when I came back to it, I noticed that there was what I assumed to be some stripper weeping out of the pores of the wood in some spots. And this may have actually been a combination of stripper and lacquer thinner. I'm not really sure. I first tried cleaning it off with some steel wool and that worked to remove anything that was on the surface, but then there would still be some stuff coming up out of the pores again after I cleaned it off. So I got a heat gun and I warmed up the wood anywhere that I saw the weeping going on. And this heat drew out the liquid in the pores and I could see it come up as it warmed up. And when it came up, I would just wipe it off. And I just kept doing this until there wasn't any more coming out of the pores. And it's worth noting that this may not have happened if the ambient temperature was warmer when I was stripping this. I did this in May, but here in Minnesota, the weather was still wintry and it didn't get out of the 40s when I was doing this. So it was pretty chilly when I stripped this. The grain on this oak was pretty bold and big and some of it, like this spot, looked to be filled with some kind of black stuff. I don't know. I think it may have been dirt. I'm not sure because most of the black areas were on the top where there was wear on the bench from people sitting. So I wanted to clean out the black stuff in the grain. And to do this, I got a wire wheel and put it on my drill and went over the whole bench with this. Cleaning out the grain like this will also give it more texture which is a look that I wanted with this. Since I would be turning it all black, I thought it would be a cool look for it to be all black, but with really heavily textured grain on it. And this wire brush worked great for this. The batteries in my drill would only last about eight to 10 minutes before running out. So I ended up going out to the thrift store and buying a corded drill for 10 bucks. There's always at least one of these in every thrift store. And it really didn't affect the smooth parts of the oak that didn't have deep grain. I was afraid it might chew that up, but I was just applying moderate pressure and it would kind of skip over the smooth parts 
And the only areas it really affected was the deep grain lines. After I had wire brushed the whole thing, then I sanded it with an orbital sander using 120 grit sandpaper, followed by 150 grit sandpaper, and then 180 grit. And after the 180, I wet the whole thing down with water. I wanted the water to raise the grain in the hopes that this would reduce any grain raising from the vinegar. I wasn't sure if vinegar actually raised grain like water does, but just to be safe, I went over it with the water first and let it dry. And then I went over the whole thing with 220 grit sandpaper. And I really concentrated on getting into those deep grain lines that I had cleaned out with the wire brush because they ended up being actually a little bit jagged, which I hadn't really, which I hadn't really thought about when I started with the wire brush. And since this was a bench and people would be sitting on it, I didn't want people's clothing to get snagged on the grain. But after doing this, I realized that the surface was a little too smooth and I was afraid that it might not be able to absorb enough of the vinegar to really get a deep black. So I took a step backwards and scuffed it up a bit with the 180 again to make sure that I got good absorption of the vinegar. And then I could start applying the vinegar. I first tested it out on the underside of the bench just to make sure it was gonna work the way I hoped it was gonna work. And when I first put it on, it looked a little bit greenish, but before long it started to darken up and it looked good. So I started applying it to the whole bench. I made this by taking a bottle of distilled white vinegar and then one fine steel wool pad. And I broke the pad up into little pieces and stuffed it into the bottle of vinegar. And I did first wash the steel wool with some dish soap to try to remove any oils that may have been on there from the manufacturing process. Not sure if that's really necessary, but I did it anyway. And then I put the cap back on, but I put it on loosely because I think this produces some gas, so I wanted that gas to be able to escape. And actually, you can already see some bubbles coming up to the top. And then eventually, it'll look dark like this. This bottle has actually been sitting around for about a year and a half. I used it on a video in 2020 where I turned an oak desk black. But when I did that video, the vinegar was only maybe three or four days old and it was still mostly clear, and it still worked. So you don't need to let it sit for a year and a half. I was really happy with how the color came out on this. It didn't turn completely black. There are some spots where you can see a hint of the oak color coming through, and maybe it's a little bit grayish in some spots, but to me it has a very natural look to it. Not like it's been stained or something like that. Once the first application had dried, then I went over the whole thing with another application of the vinegar, just to get any spots that I had missed the first time. After the second application was dry, I went over the whole thing with a paper towel and some naphtha. I just wanted to wet it down a bit to get an idea of how it would look once the clear coat went on. And as you can see, the color deepens and gets more black. 
and less chalky looking. I also noticed when I did this that some of the black came off onto the paper towel. It didn't seem to make the overall color lighter, but it's probably a good idea I went over it to get anything loose off of it before I put the top coat on. And then it was time to apply the top coat. And for this, I chose a satin spray-on lacquer. And I first tested it on the underside again, just to make sure it was gonna look the way I wanted it to look. And it looked good. So I went over the entire bench. I get asked a lot why I choose the finishes that I do for certain projects. And in this case, it was just a matter of the timetable that I was working under. I needed to get the video done and I had some lacquer on hand and I knew that it dries really quickly. Usually it dries to the touch within a few minutes. So I knew that I could get it on and get the video done and uploaded sooner than if I had used maybe an oil-based finish like polyurethane, which would have needed longer to dry. I was also a little nervous about using any kind of a wipe-on or brush-on finish because of the way that some of the black came off when I wiped it down with naphtha. I wouldn't want to be wiping on polyurethane and having some of that black come up and cause some streaks in the finish. And there's also the option of using a water-based finish. They also usually dry really quick, but I just felt that I didn't have enough experience with those. I didn't have the time to kind of get to know the process. So that's why I went with lacquer. And here it is, all finished. Thanks for watching.